Today in our OBS series, we're going to talk about transformation properties and why they're important. If you like this video, please subscribe and click that little bell for notifications when we release a new video. Welcome to Pull My Focus Adventures in the World of Digital Filmmaking, where we bring you the inside tips on making great digital film and video and now live streams with OBS. So transformational properties or transform properties as they are known as sometimes exist in many different programs that have to deal with, uh, well, positioning digital assets, right? Now I'm not talking about like a word processor or anything, but if you're talking about Premiere, Adobe Premiere or After Effects or DaVinci Resolve, uh, they all have transformation properties that are important. Well, the same thing exists in OBS. And I, I find that it's really important to teach this to new OBS users so that they can get a good handle on what the transformation properties are, where they can access them, and why are they important. So let's take a look. We're back in our scenes right now, and I'm going to uh, just turn this off. I'm going to turn the visibility off on here. Let's add a new, let's add a new image. So we have image, and I'm going to name it logo because I always name my assets that are coming in uh, appropriately, so I don't have to guess later. We're going to browse over and we're going to use the Pixel Valley Studio logo. Open that right up. So when it comes in, okay, it usually comes in at the native resolution that it's at. So I think the Pixel Valley Studio logo is a little bigger than 1280 by 720. And my canvas size right now, if I look at my preview scaling, the canvas is now 1280 by 720. So this image is much bigger. Okay, so what do you typically do? Okay, you say, oh, well, the image is bigger. All right, I'm gonna grab the handle, scale it down a little, get it to the size that I want. I'm gonna grab the handle again, move it around. You do a lot of this manual stuff right here, which is fine. What you're doing right now is called scaling. Okay, and what I'm doing right now is called scaling. Now, you can do some of this scale if you right click on either the source here or you right click on the actual object and I go to transform this menu right here very important transform every source that is brought into OBS has these properties so we go to transform and we have all these great cool things here we have rotate 90 degrees counterclockwise uh, clockwise counterclockwise rotate 180 vertical and horizontal flip and then we have these guys these are handy dandy uh, quick quick selections fit to screen right so if I say fit to screen boop, it fits it you know in the proportions that it needs to so that it doesn't leak across the screen now this particular image doesn't is not a 16 by 9 image you can say it's mostly square so it fits like that so you can actually see the transform properties right by right clicking either the source in the source window or the actual source in the on the canvas and by going to transform this now that's great now let's see what if I want to oh my goodness what if I want to do some more advanced transformations well control E or command E or right clicking going to transform and hitting edit transform will bring up this box here a lot of OBS users don't even know this box exists, so you're welcome, right? This box uh, allows you to dial in all your transformations of this scene item source, or it's called they're called scene items. Uh, we have position, we have rotation, we have size, right? We have positional alignment, bounding box time type, alignment in bounding box, bounding box size. And we have all our crops, which is not something that you get automatically, say, in Premiere or After Effects. You have to actually bring in a crop effect. Here, crop is part of the transform properties. So let's go through these one at a time. Position, it's XY. Where does it exist in XY space? I could type it in. If I add, if I go seven, if I say six, notice uh, how it's moving. Five, four, three. Or if I do by eight, seven, six, five, Right. I can also use the arrow keys to move it in the X or I can use the scroll wheel of my mouse to scroll like that. Okay. Uh, one thing to note is I can still manipulate this guy even though this dialog box is up. This dialog box is just showing me the numbers but 
I can still do things like this. So notice the position is moving as I'm moving it. The scaling is changing. The bounding box size, sorry, not the scaling. The bounding box size is changing. All right. You have rotation. I can also use my mouse wheel to do rotation. All right. Uh, we have size of the actual object. This is the actual pixels. This is the size of the pixels. There's a big difference between the bounding box scaling and the size of the actual thing. So the size of it came in at 1400 by 1400. 1400. Zero, zero. All right. Uh, sorry. 1400. Zero, zero. If you ever get stuck, you can always hit reset right here. Reset will actually reset the crap out of it. Okay. <laughs> so notice it's reset. So now I can grab one of these things just to show you guys what we're doing. Drag it down a little bit. So these are pretty much straightforward. The, now, positional al alignment. Positional alignment is a pretty big deal. By default, the positional alignment is going to be top left. What does that mean? Well, it's easiest if I show you with rotation. If I take this and I rotate it 45 degrees. No, notice, it didn't rotate it from the center. It rotated it from the top left. My positional alignment, or what would be called my anchor point, in Premiere or After Effects is top left. Let's try, change that back to zero, and let's try making this center. Now notice it just popped. The image popped because it reset zero X, zero Y to the center of this image. Now when I rotate it, it's rotating around the center. There are all different types of positional alignments um, for any scene item or source that you bring in. Top left, top center, top right, center left, center, center right, bottom left. Front. So it's basically all these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of the object. Keep that in mind when you're rotating or things, or if you want to do use something like Leon board to automatically rotate things, that they will rotate based on where the current positional alignment is set to. All right. Let's look at bounding box. Now, bounding box right now, this is typically defaulted to no bounds okay I can grab a corner and it stays pretty much proportionally correct and I can size it this way now what if we change this no bounds to stretch two bounds okay it does a reset we got a reset there but now when I grab these corners it stretches to the bounds of the the well it it stretches the image to the boundaries. I can manipulate these boundaries. Notice the image is being pulled like plastic man, like stretched and pulled. It's ignoring completely proportional uh, qualities. So I can make it look super flat or super thin because the, the source is restricted to whatever the bounds are. Does that make sense? The bounds can be anything, so therefore the source is stretching to the bounds. All right, let's take a look at scale to inner bounds. Scale to inner bounds now means it's keeping its proportional size, but it's scaling it in the X and Y perfectly. So notice that like there's lots of dead space now because I drag the bounds out, but the image does not stretch to it. That would be stretched to bounds. This is scale to scale to inner bounds okay inner is the important part of that because it's staying inside the bounds inside the bounds there's no way for this image to escape the boundaries that I am setting for it but it will scale within the bounds alternatively you have scale to outer bounds now the image may leak it has to stay proportionally correct but if I manipulate my boundaries, it can actually exist outside of the bounds. Okay? So I can do crazy stuff like this and crazy things like this. All right? These don't get often used, but there are certain circumstances where they will get used. The next type of bounding box, the next two, is scale to the width. So this keeps the width, all right? Scale to the width. So if I'm dragging it, I'm making it bigger on the width size. So it's scaling it along the width. Alternatively, 
scale to the height. I'm making it bigger, so it's scaling up to the height. Not to the width. Notice how it's not stretching it to the width now. It's only stretching it to the height. All right. And last but not least, maximum size only. Maximum size only means it will only scale up to whatever the size is in this box here. It can scale down from there, okay? But it won't scale any bigger. So if I set this size back to 1400 by 1400, okay? It will scale all the way up to 1400 by 1400, but not more. Let me see if I can get this to happen. Oh boy, that's a big size. Yeah, that's a little bit. That's, wait a minute, let's do something. Let's say a thousand by a thousand. One zero zero zero. One zero zero zero. Is that even too big? Yeah, because my screen is 1280. Okay, there we go. I think I reached 100 by 100. There's a better example. It won't get any bigger than the maximum size of the object. The alignment bounding boxes. So I'm going to set this to, let's say, 800 by 800. Okay. The alignment bounding boxes are similar to the position alignment, except this is this is where the the this is kind of the anchor point of the bounding box. Okay. So top left. Notice how it moved. Top right. Notice how it moved. Right. So this is something else you can try. If I say center top center moves to the center that would look exactly the same if i said center but these are the anchor points that it's using for that all right and then we have cropping of course cropping if i want to crop the left 100 it'll crop it off 100. also uh, i don't find myself often using these cropping dials if you hold down the alt key and you drag one of the uh one of the handles it will crop that way. Uh, if you ever find yourself in this situation where you're like, wait a minute, I want to move the bounding box and everything, you're in the wrong positional, you're in the wrong uh, bounding box type. Right now I'm at maximum size only. If I set this to no bounds and I do Alt, then it will actually drag it across. And if I set this to uh, stretch to bounds, now I'm in a situation where it will stretch it to the bound, bounding boxes. Yeah, let me bring this down again. So as you stack these, these, uh, all these different boxes, different things will happen. Different things will happen. Uh, let's do stretch to bounds again. You see that? Now I'm cropping based on that. Here's also one last thing before we go. Notice it has copy transform. Well, this is terrific. Copy transform allows me to do something where I manipulate this guy all over the place, right? Say you want to bring in another thing that's exactly like that. Well, okay, let's do this. Let's go plus image. Let's add logo number two, right? Okay, and I'm going to bring in the exact same thing again. There's a second, second one of these, right? I want this to look exactly like that guy. Well, what I can do is I can right click go to transform and say copy transform and then right click on this one go to transform and say paste transform but where did it go it pasted everything in the transform properties including the position so if I move this now look at that I have two exact duplicates because I copied the transform now this is great if you want to bring in five or six logos and they all have to kind of fill the same space. Now I'm going to hit undo because OBS now has undo. I'm going to hit undo, put it back there. What if you want to constrain it, right? I, I, I want to just move it in the X position. You, well, you can't use something like the shift key that you can in some programs, right? Uh, let's see, edit, undo that again. But you can do this. You can bring up con command, uh, control E or command E. And now I can just go to the X position and say, maybe I want this to be at 900. So I'm going to type nine. Uh, how about eight? Eight. That's good. Boom. 
I think that's going to be it for OBS transformation properties. Really super important when you start to use Leon Board or other programs that automatically move and rotate and scale and stuff, they're going to base their moves off of what is set in OBS under transformation properties. So keep that in mind when you want to do advanced stuff. I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.